Welcome back to Ta-da! 3D Printing. Today I wanted to show how easy it is to convert a JPEG into a printable file. This is my logo for my Etsy store, My Little Village. It is a very simple JPEG, but that's going to work out really well for converting. I've used this free website, online-convert.com, to transfer a lot of different things. It's automatically pulling up as converting to SVG because that's what I've used before. I just have to click choose file. It will open up another screen where I click the JPEG and it does this kind of initializing and then you have to click the start button. I have downloaded multiple things off of this without any issues, but there are a lot of ads, so it's a little tricky to focus on exactly what you need to do. So if you click the download and then open the slicer and import the item that you just downloaded, it doesn't show all of my screens that pop up, but there it is right there. So this turned out really good, except the lettering isn't perfect. So it works out better for shapes. Sometimes text is not going to work out quite as well or quite as detailed. The text is there. Even the dots of the I's turned out good, but the A's and the E's didn't. You can see that it's missing that little inner hole. It just kind of created a solid letter there. So what I want to do is go back through and just run just the text by itself and just pull that in separately. Then I pull it into Tinkercad and swap out the letters. So I just kind of slice off the letters that weren't detailed enough and then bring in the other logo that does have the little bit more detailed letters. And for this, what I wanted to do with this logo was to turn it into a sign rather than it being like a two color where I do a layer change, I wanted it to be just flat and have two solid colors in the layers. And I want it to go all the way through all of the layers. And if I just exported it as the round circle and the logo, I felt like in some slicers, I was getting an error that they had conflicting paths. So I'm going to slice out on the cylinder or the, the circle, I'm going to slice that logo out and then also bring the logo in. So it is two separate files that are going to together be a complete file. I'm sure there's probably a way to do this in the slicers, but I am so used to building things in Tinkercad that I know exactly how to knock it out quickly. So I just go that route. Now I can pull both of these files into Prusa Slicer. All of my miniatures are kind of boring. I do black and white on everything. I just like the high contrast and really simple clean lines. So that's the same thing I'm gonna do with this logo. I'm gonna have a white circle as the background and the logo and the lettering are gonna be black. And after I slice this, I was thinking that I probably want to flip it so that the first layer is going to be the smoothest. So I have to, when I flip these around, rotate them around, I do have to adjust and make sure that they're still perfectly centered. And my first attempt at this does not work. It says that I have that conflicting paths, which is what I would have had if I hadn't done the sliced out version. So I just have to go through and make sure that I have them on the build plate centered exactly the same. And I slice it again, and this time it works. I'm not getting that error again. But I don't want the infill to be at a diagonal, so I tried out a few different things on the first layer to see if I would like concentric better or just something else. But I'd go back to just the solid lines and just have my infill at zero. So this will take just under three hours and it probably will just be a single layer change on each layer because there's it's not really that complicated. It starts off and the first layer to me looks just a little too squished. This Auto Z on the MK4 I feel like works out really well most of the time, but every once in a while it looks a little funny. I ran this print after I had made those adjustments to try to get rid of the buffer and put everything back, and I don't have any errors. I really was curious with the length of time and because I had had so many errors when I had been messing with the buffer, but everything goes back to normal. It seems like I really just cannot get rid of that yet. And because why not, I run this on the Bamboo X1C as well. I want to see how overall it's going to look. And I really just want to make sure that one of these turns out how I like. So I'll try them on both of them. And I do the same to file with the uh, hollowed out logo 
on the bamboo. And to make these as similar as possible, I do run this one with zero infill direction as well. I don't want it to be at the 45. Seems like I can never find this on bamboo slicer, but it's under strength. I probably could have split this in half and not run it black all the way through, but I like the way that it looks overall. And this on the bamboo is going to take three hours and 18 minutes. Also, I ran both of these not just with the solid black, but I did the galaxy black uh, prushament just to give it a little bit more dimension. And this one on the bamboo turned out really good as well. I noticed that on the Prusa it started with white and on the bamboo it started with black for whatever reason. But the windows look good. Everything is really crisp on both of these. I'm really happy because sometimes it's hard to see the first layer. And now for the reveal on the Prusa MMU3. I was a little curious how this first layer would be because it did look a little bit too tight to me but it actually turned out great. I don't see any smudging of the black into the white. I don't see any, you know, anything that got caught inside that would like kind of show through from the layers. I think it turned out really good. And I did run that galaxy black on both of these printers. Okay, so now to compare the amount of waste on the Prusa with just this little purge tower and the little strip along the front, we have two grams of waste and the print with the waste is at 79 grams. And for the bamboo, the waste comes in with all of the little squiggles, the purge tower, everything from the print bed. We're looking at nine grams of waste. And this is running both of these stock. I know that there's adjustments that I can make to both of these printers to improve this, but for right now, I'm just trying to run things stock and make sure that everything works. With the print, we're at 89 grams, uh, 90 grams. And then to compare them together, the Prusa is on the left and the bamboo is on the right. And for the most part, I cannot tell any difference in this. If I was going to say something, I would say that the Prusa has just a little bit smoother first layer and it may just be on that one that printed really, really tight to the bed, um, but I feel like they both look really good. I don't see any gaps. The backs look good on both of these, so I really could have run them differently. Um, or I could have run them normally and it would have been fine. On the bamboo, I do feel like there's just a little bit of line at the bottom right of the um, house that you can see that it's probably like the start of the print. But for the most part, these both turned out really good. I'm really happy with them. And I probably would just run this print on whichever printer is available. Let me know if you would try out this process of converting a JPEG to a printable file. Thanks for watching.